and we have other hints that the decay rates may not have been constant. See, we've taken rock samples from a number of places for rock units in the Grand Canyon. We collected lots of samples in the Grand Canyon at each of these rock layers. We've done it in other parts of the world. I've done it in New Zealand. And what we've done is we've submitted the same samples to more than one of these dating methods because the, the, the theory says that if the clocks ticked at the rate that we measure them today and it's been a closed system, then it wouldn't matter if you use potassium argon, uranium, lead, mm -hmm. they should all give you the same result. It's like having a series of hourglass clocks lined up yes, on the bank. With just different kind of sand. Exactly, exactly. And so we wanted to test that. And, and so what we found is on the same samples with more than one method, we were getting ages that were different by hundreds of millions of years or even, even a billion years in some instances. For example, one of the lava flows in the Grand Canyon, the potassium argon gave an age of 516 million years. Rubidium strontium was double that, 1,111 million years. And one of the other methods, Samira Nudin, gave an age of 1,588 million years, three times. So we're not talking about small disparities between the ages. We're seeing huge differences by using different, different methods. Well, if, if there is that kind of a difference between all of these dating method, methods, then that would seem to confirm the fact that we have an open system here, not Correct. a closed one. And if we have an open system, that means we can't trust it uh, to give us dependable dates for, for these rocks. And that changes the whole thinking about the history of the Earth, because suddenly now these, these radioactive clocks are not reliable. Uh, we've got evidence that rates were faster in the past. Suddenly, we, we may not be thinking in terms of millions of years. We may be thinking in terms of a history that is much shorter.